Hi, welcome to Math After Hours with Miss Austin. I'm a licensed math teacher here to help you with any math questions you might have. Today we are looking at Gauss-Jordan elimination and reduced row echelon form. Right now I'm specifically looking at a system of three linear equations. If you can and if you haven't yet, please go and watch my reduced row echelon form for a two by two linear system because I think that will help prepare you a little bit for what I'm about to do. All right, so what we are going to do is set up an augmented matrix and then use row operations to get it in reduced row echelon form, which is shown here. Reduced row echelon form is where we have the identity matrix on the left hand side and that will make it so our solution shows up right here because this is really saying that 1 times x equals a, 1 times y equals b, and 1 times z equals c. So if we look at this system down here, the first thing I would want to do is create the augmented matrix. So for the augmented matrix, you just put your constants in. So for the top equation, our constants are 1, negative 1, 1. The second equation, our constants are 2, negative 3, 4. And for the last equation, our constants are 5, 1, negative 2. And then you can either put a dashed or a solid line to separate the constants from those coefficients. So with row operations, we can add rows together, we can subtract rows, we can multiply or divide by a constant, we can interchange rows. So you'll do a combination of those things as you're trying to get this in reduced row echelon form. I usually start with making sure that we have a one in the top left hand corner. And since we do, that's great. We'll move down to these two numbers right here. Now there's kind of an order in which you need to get these values up here because if you do them out of order, you can undo some of the work. So I'm going to just put that up here for you. If you have this three by three, you're going to start with this position and then you're going to get the two zeros below that. Then what you'll do is get the one in the middle and a zero below that and then you'll work in a counterclockwise direction to get the rest of the numbers in place. So we're going to follow this order as we change this system into reduced row echelon form. All right, so I need to do this spot right here next. I need this two to become a zero. So I want to do a combination of the rows. What's nice is we have a one right above it and we can change that one to be a negative two by multiplying this whole row by a negative two. Because if that was a negative two, when I add these two together, I will get a zero. So coming over here, we're going to do negative two row one plus row two to change row two. And I will rewrite this system that we had right above. So we started with one, negative one, one, two, negative three, four, five, one, negative two, and our constants were negative four, negative 15, 12. So if I'm changing row two, row one, and row three, are staying the same. So I'm going to do this math off to the side. Negative 2 times the first row will be negative 2, positive 2, negative 2, 8, that we are adding with 2, negative 3, 4, negative 15. So my new second row is going to be 0, negative 1, 2, negative 7. So 0, negative 1, 2, negative 7. When you are solving with matrices, it's really easy to make a mistake. So that's why sometimes I do the math off to the side, because the more work you show, the less likely you are to make a mistake, and then that carries through the rest of the problem if you do. So I recommend doing that math off to the side. 
As we look back at this matrix, the next number I would want to get is this one right here. I want this to be a zero. I'm going to use row one in the same way I did before to help me with row three. If this was a negative five, then when I add those rows together, I'll get a zero. So I'm going to say negative five times row one plus row three to change row three. So because we're changing row three, row one and row two are not changing. So off to the side, I'm going to do negative five times row one, which is negative five, positive five, negative five, 20, added to five, one, negative two, 12. And that's zero, six, negative seven, 32. We have zero, six, negative seven, 32. All right, so the first column is done. The next thing we wanna do is make this middle number a positive one, which is fairly easy because we can multiply or divide rows by a constant. So if I were to just multiply this second row by a negative one, that would go to a positive one. So I'm just going to multiply the second row by a negative to change that second row. So we have one, negative one, one, negative four in the top. Row three is not changing. And then the second row, we just multiply by a negative, so it's zero, positive one, negative two, positive seven. The next spot we need to take care of is this six. We want this six to become a zero. At this point, you need to do a combination of the second and third rows together. If you use the first row, then when we add the two together, this zero will go away. So you're going to undo some of the work that you've done. So you need to make sure you're using these two rows together so these stay zeros. So since this is a positive one, I can multiply this by whatever I want. So if this was say like a negative six, well then we add six and get zero. So I'm going to say negative six times the second row and add that to the third row to change the third row. So on the top we have one, negative one, one, negative four. Second row we have zero, one, negative two, seven. And then I'll do the math off to the side. So negative six times that second row is zero, negative six, 12, negative 42 that I'm adding with zero, six, negative seven, 32. So my new third row is zero, zero, five, negative 10. Okay, we are well on our way. What we want to do next is make this bottom right hand number a one. Now this number right here is a negative 10, so we can actually just divide by five on this row, because negative 10 is also divisible by five. So we're going to say row three divided by five to change row three. Row one is staying the same. Row two is staying the same. And we have zero, zero, five divided by five is one, negative 10 divided by five is negative two. What we have now is row echelon form. You may have seen some of my other videos where I show you how to put a system in row echelon form and then use back substitution to solve for X, Y, and Z. Technically, you could stop here and find your variables, but we are going to keep going and put it in reduced row echelon form and then our solutions will just show up on the right hand side of the matrix. Since we're going to keep going, the next number is this negative two. I need negative two to be a zero because we have our ones along the diagonal, so we need zeros everywhere else. If I need this to be a negative two, should I use row one or row three to help me? 
Well, we can't use row one because then if we add these two rows together, it may mess up this zero and this one that we have because these are not zeros. However, if we use row three, I can change this one to be whatever I want and these zeros will keep those values the same. So I'm going to choose to multiply row three by a positive two because then it will cancel with the negative two on the second row. So the top row is staying the same. The third row is staying the same. And then I'll do this math off to the side. Two times row three is zero, zero, two, negative four. I'm adding that to zero, one, negative two, seven. So my new second row is zero, one, zero, three. So the second and third rows are completely done. We just need to fix a couple things on the first row, namely this one next. We need to change this to a zero. I need to use the third row because this is always going to stay a zero no matter what I multiply by it. But this is a one that I can use. One minus one is zero. So I'm going to do row one minus row three to change row one. So row two is staying the same as well as row three. So then we'll do row one minus row three. One minus zero is one. Negative one minus zero is negative one. One minus one is zero. And negative four minus a negative two is negative two. Okay. Our last position, we need this number to be a zero. And this time we're going to use row two to help us because row three has a zero there. I won't be able to do anything. Since these are already opposite sign, what if I just add those two rows together? We will do row one plus row two to change row one. So second row is the same. Third row is the same. And then we have one plus zero is one. Negative one plus one is zero. Zero plus zero is zero. And negative two plus three is one. And now we have our matrix in reduced row echelon form, which means our solution is on the right hand side. This is saying X equals one, Y equals three, Z equals negative two. We can write our answer as an ordered triple or we can just write it out x equals 1, y equals 3, z equals negative 2. And that is how you use Gauss-Jordan elimination to put a system in reduced row echelon form to solve for x, y, and z. If you have any questions you would like me to do or any topics, please comment them below. Thank you for watching and please like and subscribe.